Today, we're gonna to be printing on napkins with water-based ink. We all know that you need a very large napkin when you are eating a Thanksgiving dinner. If you do things right, you're gonna have food all over yourself. So what better to clean yourself up with than with a properly branded napkin? We have an 18 by 18 napkin here. Nothing fancy, nothing chintzy, but we'll be putting our logo here in the corner. So of course you can fold it up and have it display however you want on your dinner table. The mesh we're using is a 230 mesh. The design does have some pretty good detail in there. I might end up blowing some of it out. I set this up before I saw the texture on the linen napkin itself. So this will be a fun little experiment. So instead of your standard black ink for a print like this, we figured brown is quite befitting of the fall season and Thanksgiving. So I quickly whipped up some brown ink with the Green Galaxy Spot Colors. Making brown's really easy. You pick your favorite shade of orange and add a little bit of black. If you like it, you got your good brown. If you want it to be a little lighter, add more yellow. A little bit darker, add more red. Making a brown is very simple. I've got my little six inch squeegee. The next thing that we did was we decided where we wanted to place it on the napkin itself on our platen. And then we went ahead and created a V mark to help us with placing our napkin on the platen. Place it, pull it in, and we're good to go. Same place every time. So thankfully, printing napkins is very easy. The only complexity that you're gonna have is in the detail in your napkin and whether or not you've got a very smooth linen napkin or one with some really neat texture to it. This one's kind of in between, so we're gonna see how this turns out. Let's add our ink and do a test print. So the reason why we're using water-based ink is simply because it's gonna be much softer when you rub it across your face to wipe off that last bit of pumpkin pie. We don't need a whole lot of ink on the screen. The design itself is very small. And the only thing that we really need to worry about is just having enough ink there to keep the screen flooded. Keep the lid on your ink whenever it's in use and make sure to clean your utensils. Nobody wants to reach over mid print and find out the ink on their spatula has dried up. And then that ink gets in your ink and then the dried ink gets in your screen. And that's no fun for anybody. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. Flood backwards, take a look. That little snap snap you heard was the squeegee hitting the adhesive on the platen there. So first print stroke, looks a little light. We have the texture that we're fighting on the napkin itself. So I'll give that one more print stroke. There we go. That's about as good as that's going to get. All right, so I am fighting the texture on the napkin itself just a little bit. Let's keep going and I'm gonna do the other corners of this napkin. I'm just gonna rotate that around, pull that into the corner and get it flat. Now it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not into this corner because the napkin itself is going to move even if you fold it. And of course, now we've got gone. It's not like a mattress where you get sued and fined and pay a lot of money if you pull that out. All right, first print to fourth print. I'm holding enough detail and I've got some good saturation. I'm using a little six inch squeegee. I am keeping my angle pretty straight up. The pressure I'm putting on here, I, I don't know, I can't really see my squeegee angle, so uh, maybe the cameraman can give you a better idea of how much pressure I'm actually applying. Using both hands to make sure I'm controlling it. Definitely coming in contact with the adhesive on the platen.
Oh, stitching's off on this corner a little bit. Now, one of the things I've noticed is because of this texture that we've got here, we've got a little bit of residual ink in the image that doesn't clear all the way. And that can leave a little mark when that next screen deposits ink. Like this one, we've got a little bit of a, of a jagged pattern happening. That'll leave a little bit of ink in the screen. So when that finally drops, you can have a slight, slight bumpiness to the edge of your print. I found that the best way to cover that up is with a little bit of gravy. Now with water base, one of the things you always want to pay attention to is keeping your inks properly hydrated. If you're in an environment that's very dry, you're going to want to use a spray bottle, just a simple spray bottle filled with water, and mist your inks on occasion just to make sure that they keep a, a good, uh, good level of moisture within them. Otherwise, the inks can end up getting dry. And aside from not curing properly, which is a more extreme version of them getting dry, they can just become challenging to print. It's also very important to keep a good rhythm and keep printing when you do anything with water base. Here's the last print I did. It looks about as good. Let's compare it to the first print. So from the first print to the last print, the first print's always gonna be a little bit light and you're worried about controlling your pressures and everything else. The first couple of prints were a little light, but as we got towards the end there, the, you know, like the third and the fourth started to, to gain a little bit. Whenever you're dealing with textured fabrics, you're gonna find that right balance for all your pressures. In this case, my first one, my pressures weren't quite dialed in. All the prints look a little light. It wasn't until that fourth one that it started to get that good saturation that I wanted and then that carried through to the rest of them. I mean, there could be an argument in here that, Colin, you put in too much detail again, and I wouldn't argue, I do, I, I like detail. To me, it looks fine. Would I make this a little bigger? Yeah, probably, um, but this was meant to be in a little corner piece. So I'm quite happy with it. Don't leave your screen unattended for too long. You don't get full screen clearance. Water-based ink, you absolutely want to keep moving. It wants to keep moving. The whole, the, the whole point of this is that you don't want the, the ink to start drying in the screen at all. You've got to move it, move it. Keeping yourself that consistent for that long with water base is tiring. Cornucopia. The horn of plenty. So the, the seam on here, is both giving me a little bit of a struggle in terms of keeping enough pressure that the screen touches down and gives enough pressure and I get good clearance, but it's also helping with getting the, the screen up off of the print very quickly. So before anyone says, hey, why didn't you put any paper down there or something else to be a buffer for the glue? It's only a small movement and you can hear that the screen's not being damaged. So I ran with it. Snap, snap. So after a few prints, you get into a rhythm of, of what your body needs to do to get a good clean print out of it. You also get a feel for how the ink is behaving, how loose is it, how not loose is it. And right now is one of those moments where I either need to spray this with water and you know mix the ink around a bit or just add a little bit more. I only have a, a couple left, so I can get away with just adding a little more ink. Would I prefer to do this as four corners or would I prefer to do more of an oversized print? So we kind of like doing a, a bandana all at once. There's merit to doing one big screen, but if you're gonna go ahead and do one big screen, you need your, your napkins to be perfectly square. Square enough that your corners are all consistent. Unless you're paying a lot for napkins or you're able to cut the fabric yourself, or whatever it is that you're printing. It doesn't have to be napkins. It can be bandanas or you know handkerchiefs, whatever it is. The squarer it is, the easier it is to do an all over print. 
the more irregular the shape is, the more you want to take it a little more piecemeal or be or spend extra time getting everything lined up properly. I mean, there's a good example. Corner is just not straight. And that's fine. For something like this, I just find that something that's close, call it good. And these are, this is not a, a four star restaurant that's going to be displaying these napkins. This is like a home thing, pretty relaxed, you know. It's not gonna be at any Michelin starred restaurant. And we're done. So at the end of any job, you wanna go ahead and clean your screen out because if you find that there's a misprint and you need to go back and print one or two more, nobody hates cleaning out a screen more than the person who was like, I could have just. Best habits, best practice, clean the image area before you go and count your eggs. And we're all done. We didn't have any misprints, even though the first ones I did were a little light. Like I said, we can cover that up with a little bit of gravy. It's all good. It's all about looking at the details and being consistent. Over the next couple of weeks, check your orders. We're gonna be adding some of these randomly to the orders coming out of the Washington location. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, throw us a subscribe as well. We'll have lots more fun stuff like this coming up in the future. If you know someone who's got a project coming up printing on Waterbase, share this video with them. Thank you all, have a great Thanksgiving. The fabric is not that soft. <laughs> Ooh, sandpaper, so nice. Hey, over the next couple of weeks, check your orders carefully. We are going to be adding, over, 